screen, some Twitch screen, streamers scream, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they're usually right on it. You know, they're, they're eating that microphone. Oh, they... <laughs> What's happening, Boot Junkies? Today, we are going to talk with Andrew Jones from DD Microphone. Andrew is an LA-based uh, location sound mixer, uh, I think self-professed Android gamer and Diet Coke addict, and but he's also DD Microphone's brand developer. He's one of the go-to recording educators on YouTube. So if you've if you've seen the Deity Microphones YouTube channel, it's not just about Deity Microphones. It's got lots of lot uh, lots of brand neutral tricks, tips, and just full-on sound recording tutorials from Deity Microphones. And they have a new microphone, this one that's in front of me, the VO7U USB microphones that's designed for podcasters and for streamers. So I thought we'd have Andrew on to talk about the genesis of this microphone, why this is might be the right microphone for you, and to just talk about Deity in general. Andrew, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's such a pleasure to have you here. I really, I really appreciate it. Oh, it's a joy to be with you, Mike. So let's let's start with this microphone. If, if I recall correctly from your website, this started with uh, a collaboration, a conversation with uh, John Prosser from Front Page Tech, if I'm not mistaken. Is that, is that right? Is that where this microphone came from? Yeah, it started there as a conversation. Like He and I would chat at like midnight. So you're always just kind of in a loopy brain state. And he's like, why didn't you guys make something that's USB that plugs into the computer? And I said, we've tried this. We, we have actually attempted a studio microphone that got a tiny bit of coverage back in 2019, but like we missed the mark. Like we designed a USB mic that was like $450. Like it, it was a, it was a Cadillac of microphones, but like clearly not market viable. So we escaped that. We said, we don't know what we're doing. Let's kind of run back to what we know. And John was like, no, no, what you were doing wrong was you made a condenser. You should have made a dynamic. And I was like, that's an interesting idea. There's not too many of those. It's kind of a, a missing demographic at the, at the time when we started this project. And it was like, okay, so if we start with the dynamic, let's see what is that, that people really need versus what they think they want and then never touch after like day one of buying their product. I, well, I mean, it, it does seem that this, this microphone, just having run through the specifications of it, that it is really designed for people who are you know aren't maybe like you and me that aren't gearheads that don't want to know, uh, you know all the specifications they want a microphone that's easy to plug in and is going to forgive bad technique tough room conditions that it forgives yeah. a lot of that stuff so yeah it, maybe it alters the sound a little bit this doesn't sound like my studio microphones but I, I you know at least not my you know the big microphones that I use for voiceover but it is far more forgiving than those ever would be. Yeah, we think not having the technical knowledge shouldn't be a hindrance to you wanting to create. Uh, there's so often you get these microphones and they're limiting to what operating systems you could run on. Mm -hmm. And we were like, that shouldn't limit you. You should just be able to plug it and, and just use it from day one. Uh, everything in the box should make it so that you could use it with whatever you own natively uh, from an Android device to a Windows computer. It should just work. First and foremost, we wanted to build something that's a hardware-driven microphone. So many USB mics on the market are software-driven in the sense that like, you have to draw, install either some driver package from the website, which kind of also makes your microphone easy to fall out of date with the new operating systems. You could have compatibility issues, and if they don't go and fix that, well, you're kind of up a creek with no, no paddle. So we wanted to make this sure this microphone was first and foremost hardware-driven for longevity. We're not one to make e-waste. Secondly, we wanted to make it so that like you don't have to install some kind of EQ package or some kind of software that enables features. They should just be there from the beginning. Yeah. So I mean, and I think your your documentation says like it's got the analog limiter built in, so that you know when people get excited. I know when I listen to my son game and and stream, and every <laughs> once in a while, like he, you know. He rage quits or he screams or, or whatever happens that, you know, having the, having the, uh, you know, a limiter built in, uh, yeah. it, you know, just thinking through those things so that it, you know, that I think that this mic is a, a appropriately high pass. It's, it's really hard to send a plosive into it. It's, it's, it's got the limiter built into it. It's got a nice gain, you know, it's got nice gain, easy to, easy to adjust gain. The other thing that I really liked about it, it took me, it took me a second because it, it, was an improvement on on many other USB microphones is I could still use the up and down volume key that's like on my keyboard. 
Yeah. So many times, I, and I think this is to your point where you have to slide this mixer. You're either hearing the mic or the, you're hearing the, the computer and they're not necessarily, you're, you're deactivating the traditional way to turn it up and turn it down in your headphones. So mm-hmm. just being able to just still treat it like a regular sound card. That was actually really helpful. Yeah, I mean, with the limiter, we've had many people are like, can I deactivate it? And I'm like, but you wouldn't want to. It's mm-hmm. not like one of these overpowering, it cuts in and all of a sudden you hear it kind of noises, especially when you're doing other things like playing music in the background of a stream or in the back end of a podcast or a gameplay situation where you're going to hear like things pop in and out like a noise gate. It's not quite that same thing. It's, it's a very subtle limiter. All the hardware adjustments are meant to be used in a way that you would think, how would my mom use it? And I've sent these to my family, and that's how I tested the microphones. When we did beta testing during the (laughs) pandemic, I was like, I'm video calling my family all the time because I can't visit them anymore. Right, right. Let's send them microphones. I'm I'm video calling with them all the time. Let's let's see if my mom can figure this out. Yeah. And she had no problem. She was like, yeah, it it looks like the microphone. It makes the microphone loud. This looks like the headphones. It Mm -hmm. makes my headphones loud. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, yeah. mom, that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think for a lot of, you know, a lot of streamers that don't want to have to investigate their gear, probably for a lot of podcasters that just want to sit down and start talking, po- yeah. you know, want to do the, po- they want to do the podcast. They want to do their idea and not necessarily become audio engineers. Uh, it, it seems like it's a natural for podcasters. The best way to look at podcasters, and we just came back from podcast movement, was our background as a brand is in the TV film industry. So we often are talking to engineers who are buying our equipment, not the actor. But in podcast world, that's usually one and the same. Sure. So the last thing you want to do as a podcaster who is a creative, who is a storyteller, you don't want to get bogged down in the details of how to make it sound good. You bought something that was promising to sound good. It should sound good. Mm -hmm. So that's why we put together the kit so that you can put proper mic placement in the first foremost have a windscreen that comes with the microphone so that it takes care of plosives so that all those little things that you don't know aren't things you do need to learn if that makes sense you just need to put it in front of you and talk yeah yeah it's it's okay if you don't know what you don't know at this point when you when you that was a like having the dual the the there's like the two layers of foam i've got the i've got the the clown nose on here that comes with it but there's also sort of a secondary clown nose under the under the grill so that even if you do lose you know the the external one you're still you're still protected you can just sit and sit in front of it because i know like when you know my daughter wanted to do some some podcast with with friends you know just a little thing among friends and and i'm like yeah. okay well we're going to get you an interface and we're going to go out and find a couple of microphones <laughs> and this one may need a cloud lifter but we'll think about that after the fact and you know because i'm like you know excessively yeah. you know I'm, I'm overly geared up over here and she's like it's, it's all way too confusing pops can can i just have a, a right. microphone <laughs> can i use one of your cheap ones i'm like she just wants it. They just want it to be easy. Right. And the fact that, you know, that this can go into a phone, that you can plug this into, a, you know, your Android. My kids are Android users, so you can just plug it into an Android. Yeah, and, same. And away, away they go. Away they go. And if you're doing the video podcasting, which is exploding now, yeah, it's like the idea of going into a phone to shoot video on your phone. I mean, that's how TikTok is done every day. Yeah, I mean, right. the idea that you can get podcast quality audio on your tiktok videos we thought was a growth sector and not just from like uh we're gonna sell a lot of microphones but it's more of have you watched a lot of these tiktoks like you can get variable audio all over the place and then you have to rely on the speakers of people's phones to sound good and it's like way too many variables if you plug in a microphone to a phone it should sound just as good as it did when you plugged into a camera or a laptop and that's what we wanted to make available to people I think you've done a, a a a great job. It 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 ticks so many of the boxes that when I think about what is an uh, what would be, I, I I guess you'd call it an entry level microphone. I I don't think from a sound perspective it necessarily sounds entry level in the in the sense of cheap. Mm-hmm. I think it's entry level in the fact that it does a lot of the work for you, but it's not like you know. AI driven, like you said, with with tons of plugins, right. and you have a, you have a whole dashboard. You plug the mic in to, to to both you know the computer and the mic, and you can hit record. It it just works very very straightforward. It's it's 
subtlety and simplicity yeah um is kind of how we describe this it's one of those things that like it it takes the guesswork out so you can get on to the, all the other things you want to do. I, I've gotten a, you. You sent this to me. Full di- disclosure to everybody. They, they, you know, Didi, Didi sent me this microphone, and I've and I've enjoyed enjoyed using it. But I've also enjoyed many of the other you know Deity products. I've recorded audiobooks with your S Mic Two S, the short shotgun. Oh, I mean, great great microphone. I re- I love I love that microphone. Uh, and you know, I've I've enjoyed the the <laughs> the, the the longer shotgun. I, I the, no the idea. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Initially, I th- I think of of deity as, and you might have to help me with the with the history of of how deity came around. But I thought think of you first as like location. It's a lot about sets. Yeah. You look at your 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 YouTube channel. It's a lot about you know getting your camera right, getting sound into your camera right, getting sound on location right. And maybe that's because of your background. Um, but I, I am uh, I'm I'm sort of gratified. I'm happy to see that you're you're expanding into other areas to bring the the deity quality at the price point that you guys operate at seeing you come over yeah. it's uh it's it's a cool change with yeah. the pandemic it was like getting a crash course in all things usb because here at the office we couldn't even meet and hang out with each other in the same office so it became quickly every single thing we did was decentralized which means going out and buying a bunch of microphones for our own team which ended up inadvertently becoming like this giant testing ground for what people actually used and didn't use. So we were like, oh, so this is something we now kind of know. Let's kind of grow this. Let's make it so that we don't just do TV film. We're more of a spoken word kind of brand. Everything we mm. kind of capture in the TV film industry is actors just running dialogue. Well, that's right. kind of what podcasters already did. So we took that philosophy of what sound profiles we think we like, what kind of makes sense for our brand, and just go and expand into more spoken word. Mm -hmm. And with this microphone, we felt podcast, uh, um, streamer, we know the rise of the Twitch streamer has kind of been a thing the last couple of Mm -hmm. years, and Mm -hmm. they now assign themselves these titles like content creator instead of just Twitch streamer. So they're right. they're taking their clips, they're putting them on YouTube, they're taking their clips, putting it on TikTok. They're multi-platform, you know, content creators, and we're like, that seems to be like a cool demographic. Let's help them create. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what our brand philosophy is uh, in almost all aspects. We just started in the TV film industry because of our background, but we want to help more people make creating and getting their voice out there easier. I, and I think that's great. I, I hadn't really considered it that, that you guys are specialized in spoken word, but now that you mention it and you, and you categorize it that way, it, it makes perfect sense. You're not necessarily creating, not that your microphones couldn't be used for recording music, but it's really not what the, what their intention is. And, and, right. and I do think that, you know, certainly from a, as from a voice acting perspective, I think of microphones differently than say a, a musician or you know a, oh yeah miking a cabinet or miking an acoustic instrument we different we're different we we approach the microphone differently we work it differently we respect its patterns differently uh so you know it's it, it's it's still an instrument you know my voice is still an instrument but i do think it behaves maybe somewhat differently than uh, a musical instrument yeah i mean you know this is dynamic but this is not a drum mic Right. You know what I mean? And right. that SPL on a drum mic is going to be massive. And yeah. th- it's going to have its own sweet spots as to where it wants to be hit with the right sound waves to pull in the full fidelity of that capsule. So we had to come up with a capsule that still sounded good when most people don't talk very loud. Um, so like it was right. one of those real balances of a situation. Although I have heard some of the games, some Twitch screen, streamers scream, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they're usually right on it. You know, they're, they're eating that microphone. Oh, they, <laughs> that's what the limiter's for, too. I mean, we, we witnessed that, too, when we were watching people and we were like, yeah. man, they really get, get like big on some of these streams. Like, they, they could tamper that down a little bit, and they don't know. Yeah. So let's help them with that by including some features they may not understand, but right. they'll hear the difference. From this, the, the the handful of Twitch streamers that I watch, the gamers that I watch, um, you know, it seems like their setup is, and forgive me, I'll mention some other brands here, but the classic seemed to be it was a Shure yeah. SM7B going, going into a DBX286. HyperX. There's so yeah. many. Yeah. 
Yeah, or, and going into a, a DBX286, one, because they needed all the gain they could get, and two, it had the compressor so that when they do rage quit, when, they go, when they've been killed or whatever <laughs> happens, that the compressor doesn't clip the microphone and, and kill the listener, although sometimes I think they want to kill the listener. But that is a significantly, <laughs> significantly more expensive setup. Takes a lot oh. of practice to get that setup. That's because that that can be an expensive setup. Six six hundred bucks to all in, and Easily. this is nowhere near Easily. that, right? And this is oh, and that's not counting the arm. That's not counting mounting hardware. For uh, sure. Some nice Mugami cables. I mean, <laughs> it could be easily. You're looking at seven eight hundred dollars to go with a nice dynamic microphone setup. And then when we were at Podcast Movement last week, we're talking to so many people, and they're like, well, I've been doing this for about a year. I bought a $40 kit off Amazon. Yeah. So it's hard to tell that person who's $40 into their hobby, trying to become a professional, that I need you to take that $40 you've already invested. It's worth nothing now because everything you bought isn't compatible with this massive expense of setup. And it's like, where's the middle ground? Where's the people that are the extreme hobbyist, the people that want better sound quality that don't want to just bargain basement kind of sound or bargain basement accessories that get tossed in with the mic. And it's, it's hard to sell people on some of that stuff when they've never made money on their YouTube channel. They've never made money on their podcast before, but you're telling them if you don't have this $800 setup, you're not like, you're not doing it right. It's like, well, that's just not true. Rob, did you, um, did you want to say something? I did actually, just kind of what you guys are talking about, and it makes me think of Harris Heller, big, big streamer and YouTube live guy and everything. And what he talks about is, okay, yes, I have this overpriced mic. It has never made me a nickel. The, right. You need, you need sound that is good. Anything, every, every dollar you spend after that is not money you could be spending on your content. And I, and that's, yeah. I, it seems like this is aimed at the, here, you're going to get good sound out of this. Now go invest your money elsewhere to enhance your content. Yeah. The yeah. law of diminishing returns here really starts at a certain price point and every, like, we'll say like a certain microphone doesn't matter what, doesn't matter this. We'll talk general terms. Now you can buy a microphone that does like 90% of what you need for a reasonable amount of dollars. That last 10% is going to like triple the price. And for a lot of people, their audience isn't going to notice the last 10%, especially when you start doing things like adding gameplay on top of your audio, where I'm hearing the background sound effects, like anything that would be added by that 10% could easily also be argued is lost by all the extra sound going on. So good quality is sometimes good enough. And I think I think with the development of uh, of what the new brands like like Deity, Deity are doing, is you're bringing a lot higher quality to that middle ground, so that the so that the the difference between the mid price and the esoteric price, the difference in quality is is a lot different. Uh, you know, I, w I just reviewed a microphone not too long ago. The uh, familiar with the, familiar with the Aston Spirit, it's like a three hundred and twenty dollar microphone. Yeah. That's and the the it, the one that looks like a coke can, like like a coke can, right? And I put it next, yeah. to, and so that's like three like three hundred and twenty dollars, and I compared it to my thirty two hundred dollar Neumann, and because you know on paper their specs are similar enough, and the distance between them hardly justifies an order of magnitude difference in price. Like adding a full zero to the end, uh, those <laughs> these, these you know what we can do now, and what brands like yours are doing, certainly with your shotguns. I mean your shotguns are super competitive with you know because i have a th you know i got a thousand I, I i got a thousand dollar shotgun in in my studio but i recorded mm -hmm. i recorded with your with the uh s mic 2s and i forget what that runs is that between three and four hundred dollars i if i recall 350 ish yeah 350 yeah some, somewhere in there and i the the size was right the sound quality was absolutely there the client was super happy with the audio book i i recorded with it at three hundred and three hundred and fifty bucks, I mean, I love I love what's coming out of it. If memory serves, one of your clients, like you did a consulting gig where you actually set them up with Deity product. They were doing a bit of a studio setup. Yeah, yeah, I was helping. I was helping a a, a company do all get all of their trainers. They were doing. They were switching to all from on site training to doing remote 
remote training. So they were doing YouTube style videos and they were doing webinars. And we just did, we did DD mics across the board because it was the two S's because they're compact, they're easy, they're easy to, they're easy to hide, but they're easy to use. And we, and the price was right. I could buy, I could buy a yeah. microphone for every trainer rather than one, you know, 416, for example, and get for like just a few they had to share yeah, yeah right and so yeah. i could i could outfit outfit the whole team uh with a a, a basic interface and and the two s's and it served that so far that was like four years ago and they're still using them because they're they're great i mics. mean it's one of those situations <laughs> where the training in those videos is the critical part content is king the content has to be good the production quality doesn't have to be you know big Hollywood budget kind of production quality as long as the content is compelling and can suck the audience in that's the critical part of the future for all content creators I mean you yourself are talking about how the same microphone review but with a different thing in front of you just doesn't excite you the creator anymore and that's what everyone seems to be going through on YouTube now the idea of just I'm going to do an unboxing, but I'm going to do this unboxing now in 4K. I bought a brand new camera. This one shoots the 4K. We're going to do it. I'm going to spend $1,000 on the shotgun. I'm going to blow another ten grand on lights, and we're going to do the same unboxing video. And I bet it's going to grow my channel. And it's like spinning the gear doesn't grow the channel. Absolutely. The content grows the channel. The content grows the podcast. Being able to spend less frees you up to actually make the content so that you're not you know, grinding out and grinding and grinding, just trying to get enough to buy that super expensive gear. I mean, certainly my channel, oh, yeah. I, I used a $300 camera forever until it finally, you know, just used itself up from being on for years at a time before I have to had to upgrade my camera. But I never got once, never once a complaint that, oh, your camera's not crisp enough. Your, your gear's not right. high, you know, high quality enough. Um, you know, I think, it I think it's certain enough. for... Yeah, it was good enough, especially when we think about making for YouTube. We're not all going to be Marquez Brownlee, right? We don't need, we don't necessarily need that. I think that has its time and its place, but I can't compete with that. And, you know, I, I make a lot of YouTube videos. I, I do okay on YouTube, but I can't, I can't compete with that. I just want to concentrate on making content and helping people make decisions on the tools they need for their career in the, in the case of voiceover. That's why I review, you know, sometimes expensive microphones because as a, as a professional tool, sometimes we need that ultra high fidelity and so forth. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, that's your bread and butter. Right, right. It's the it's the tool I use to 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 do my job. There's a there's a difference between a a consumer camera and a professional camera for a reason. There's a difference between a a consumer microphone and a professional microphone for, uh, for certain you know for for the for the right situation. Um, but having that middle ground for the hobbyist and allowing the hobbyist to explore their hobby to the fullest, and to then transition to turn their hobby into their avocation and potentially into their vocation. You can use, you can use this, this mid-level sort of consumer grade, prosumer grade, as long as it comes from a brand that cares and isn't just turning out future e-waste, I think. Which uh, I mean, some, that some was companies the are. e-waste thing. It's, <laughs> it's so true. I mean, you look at some of these products, uh, and that's something we try to avoid, is we didn't want to do anything that required us to do follow-up updates. You know, the latest version of Mac comes out, and it's like, broke all the software. you got to wait for the company to go and fix it before you can do your thing. Or worse, you're having to wait back and not update your operating system, which means you're now at a security risk because you're waiting for the company that you rely on to update their software before you can update. And it's like, no, we just, it just should just work. It should just use core drivers that every operating system runs on. And then when they get updated, those same core drivers follow through. Sure. That's all it should work. Yeah. That's exactly, that's exactly right. And I can, I can speak from, from full on experience. I have a set of studio monitors and they rely on a piece of software in order to calibrate them. But it hasn't been the the monitors were uh, were discontinued, and thus the software was. So I literally mm -hmm. still have a Windows Seven laptop that runs one piece of software that I have to keep that that I have to charge the laptop from time to time to keep that laptop alive, just so when I move studios, 
I can recalibrate the monitors because the only way I can do it is through, is through the software. And that's the fear. Which is crazy. That's the fear Yeah. when you buy something that's full digital. That's why when everyone tells you XLR is better. And it's like, well, hold on. XLR is better because it allows you to get into better preamplifiers. And you could run it a little bit longer. And, and technically, it's more future-proof. But if you have a good preamplifier in a USB mic, now all of a sudden it becomes how could that be considered still a bad thing? And the thing is, you're still tied to this idea of reliance on discontinuation or old drivers and things like that. So if we can avoid a lot of that, we can close the gap between this theoretical concept of XLR is better and USB bad, we can close that gap some. Yeah. And XLR does not necessarily make you immune to it. Oh, gosh. How many preamps have we seen that like... Uh, a Digi 003, you know, from 10 years ago, we have been like, this is the flagship. This thing's amazing. And now you can't even get a Firewire 800 port on a computer. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I just, um, I had an, uh, an Apogee Duet, but it was the old one. And it essentially doesn't work on the on the latest version of Mavericks. Now, luckily, Apogee was nice and they allowed you to do a, a very, they were very generous on a trade-in. Ooh. But that piece that piece of equipment essentially obsoleted itself strictly because it like they didn't have the USB drivers that would work on like the M1 Max and or so forth. But right. they were kind enough to do it. But most companies they're like, well, you got to buy new. It's a hard sell to the customer too when they're like, but how long is the lifespan of this? And I'm like, yeah, well. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure we took care of the customer first and foremost. And you'll see with a lot of our products, with the internal lithium batteries on some of our wireless, the idea being AA batteries don't end up in the landfill. Mm -hmm. Now, we're seeing things like really good AA rechargeables show up on the market, and more people adopt them. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But anything we can do as a brand to keep things out of the landfill, that's our first and foremost concept in any creation. I don't know what else to, to talk about. Um, I, I would love to talk about your YouTube channel a little bit. Can we, or, or yeah, somewhere, where would, you, yeah, where would you like we can to transition? So I have a discord and, and somebody posted a video the other day uh, where you were cleaning a microphone and you sprayed lice ah. on You're like, oh, that, that was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. I think I sprayed it for like 50 seconds, like just full on, just emptied a whole can of Lysol onto a microphone <laughs> and it was like, oh crap. Uh, this is not evaporating. We probably are going to have to clean this thing uh, way more than we should have. It should have been a, probably a light spray. We've done some crazy things on the YouTube channel, uh, mostly out of the idea that like we wanted to do them. Yeah. Uh, like drive. I think in one of our videos, we drive over a microphone with my car. We f take that same microphone, freeze it in a block of ice. It's just fun things we want to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the more off brand things like you were talking about earlier, it's, it's things that we know people want to learn and don't even know exist. Uh, there's so many tips and tricks in the TV film industry that get that shot, that get that audio captured that way, that unless you were on the set or you've had to do it in, in your job, you would never know. But as an indie filmmaker, as a YouTuber, there's no one to kind of uh, mentor you. Uh, so many people out there in YouTube want to teach filmmaking. None of them want to teach sound for film. Uh, and it's it's that's what kind of what our YouTube channel is all about. It's not necessarily a branded channel. Uh, sometimes we forget to mention the brand. Uh, more often than not, uh, we forget to use our own products. Uh, yeah. And that's just the case <laughs> is. It's, it's We didn't make a product that works well for the situation. This other company did. Let's use the other company because at the end of the day, it's more about doing it the right way with us. Right than trying to shill for our own brand. Uh, you'll see sometimes on YouTube channels where a brand would be like, every single thing's got to be branded by their brand, even if it's not the best product for the job. And it's like, no, sometimes I'm going to show you a sound devices recorder. I'm going to show you a Zoom recorder. I'm not going to show you the recorder we make because it's not the right thing. And because we're using the right thing, hopefully you'll come back to us the next time because you're going to see the next right thing that we do. And that's the way we try to grow loyalty with our community uh, by just being honest with them. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Maybe we've seen so many videos that say how to get cinematic video. Hopefully we can, can <laughs> how to get cinematic, right? How many, get your, make your, make yeah. your videos look cinematic. How many times have we seen that? But yeah. how do we get, how do we get it to trend to say how to make your videos 
sound cinematic. It's so important. I mean, how often have we seen a video? And I always use this example is you'll see a video of a tornado, right? And you're like, I'm glued. I want to see this tornado hit that car. And, you know, the, or the one, the red pickup that like just drives right through the tornado. Nothing happens to it. Like, you know, it's an amazing video. The video quality, though, is utter garbage. I don't know what happens with cell phones when they see tornadoes, but they drop to like 320p. Like they become the blockiest, most ugliest video you've ever seen in your life. But because you can hear the person holding the camera sound, you know, scared and they're saying stuff like get back in the house and it sounds clear because they're doing a lot of filtering to get rid of the wind noise. All of a sudden you're like, I can sit here for a minute and watch this, even though the video looks utter garbage. The sound quality isn't like killing my ears. I can sit through this. Sound is so much more important than video. And as more podcasters get into audio podcasting, into expanding it to video podcasting, now that YouTube has launched a podcast section on the platform and they now have a director of podcasting, you're going to see, if you're watching this, know that the future of YouTube is podcast. They see that as a growth sector for their industry. Uh, as a content creator, having a podcast that you can categorize into that field is going to push you much further in the algorithm. We know this. The last thing you need to be worried about, though, is your video quality. Audio quality is still the primary like driving force for people to watch, especially long-term content like an hour interview. Video-wise, you know, you can get away with not the greatest quality, but no one's going to listen to an audio podcast or a video podcast that is an hour long with really bad quality. Oh, and I think I think the the corollary to that is, and I, I maybe this is maybe this. I would love this to be a market because I watch lots of, I watch lots of long form that isn't that is more like webinar, uh, you know, college classes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And invariably, the professor is talking into a laptop microphone from four feet away, and the uh, you, you you can yeah. see their slides. But you can't hear a word they're saying because it's, you know, you, you just can't hear anything they're saying because they're far away from the microphone or the room is so yeah. reverberant. And probably in part because it's been complicated to set up. I don't know how to do audio. And, I, and really, you just say, just get a get the Deity VO7U, yeah. plug it in and hit record because it's going to do everything for you without drivers without without anything i mean i'd love to see these certainly installed in every classroom that's also doing remote learning or doing you know for companies that are doing webinars companies we that make are a doing wireless training. usb yeah. mic that can be clipped to you that we plug the receiver into the computer and the computer just goes oh you plugged a usb mic into me and it really it's a wireless mic for teachers for presenters that can then get four or five feet with a blackboard and kind of draw on it and do diagrams so that they can convey the visual, you know, just as easy as they're conveying the audio without having to have that laptop sound. Uh, I mean, long form, I watch a lot of it. Uh, and I, I watch the ones, first and foremost, that sound good. They're not always the most visually element, you know, uh, uh, amazing. They're not doing a ton of graphics. Most of it's talking head and they're like kind of just going off a couple of topics between them and a buddy. But I will sit there in my car, I'll put YouTube on, put it in my passenger seat so I can't even visually see it. Like, I've lost all reference to what they look like, but I know their voice because they really care about the audio quality of their long-form YouTube. And it, it the, the you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an avid follower. Do you know Alan Williams over at Soundspeeds? Have you ever met him? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, and he's like, he's been so instructive for me for for location sound and and really just reinforcing for me how important sound is for video. I know I'm not breaking any new ground here, but of uh, you, just as you said, people will tolerate low frame rate, low resolution, but they have a much harder time tolerating low resolution audio low oh yeah bit rate audio where it just doesn't sound good they punch out even if it's 4k crystal clear if they can't understand it they, they can't understand the audio they are out they are out it is so so important our number one video on our youtube channel was shot on a cell phone but i'm wearing really? a lav so yeah. it works <laughs> yeah 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 it, it makes a it makes a <laughs> makes a huge difference 
Um, uh, wh- where do you think, uh, where, where do you see, if you can talk about, where do you see deity going in the, in the coming years? Are you going to concentrate more on v- video? Or are you going to concentrate more in the, in the streaming space? Where do you, where do you think you're going? If you can talk about it. I, th- I will say this. Uh, I think those spaces are not two separate spaces. Um, it, yeah, I think you're going to see a convergence. As I said, like you look at Spotify, they have audio podcast, but the big ones they're signing are video podcast. And at what point does Spotify then open that up for more people and they now launch their own version of YouTube on Spotify? How's that any different? You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure it drives uh, the them crazy. Time, yeah. Like you, they look at YouTube and they look at all the video podcasters on YouTube going, why are they not on Spotify? And I can totally see a Spotify. All they got to do is flip a switch, get some server space, and they're flipping a switch. And Spotify becomes the next YouTube. It becomes the net. Uh, it's all video on demand. So it, it's, and I guess it can do a live stream. So, like, how is it not a YouTube? And it also has the massive catalog of music. Oh, you mean like YouTube music and like YouTube? Like, at a certain point, like, you could see another major platform finally take on YouTube. And in that case, the idea of what a streamer is, what is a podcast, what is a YouTuber, it really blends. And I could totally see this happening sooner than later. Because now that YouTube has a podcast director, they're pushing podcasts, and it just started last week. So you're just seeing the little bit starting right now. If you're watching this, by the time this comes out, you probably should be talking to your fellow collaborators about what long-form video content you can do for the platform. Because that's going to be the growth sector that they're going to push. We know what makes the front page. Those are going to start hitting the front page of YouTube on a regular basis. It's really interesting because I think if for such a long time it was like 10 minutes was a sweet spot for YouTube. But I think it's mm-hmm. I think it's actually bifurcating. You know, they're taking on TikTok. So there's all this like 15 and 30 second and, and 90 second video. Absolutely. That is just scroll while you're sitting in the bathroom. Scroll, 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 scroll. But then there's also... Bathroom is the best way to describe it. <laughs> it's and bathroom then, and then content. <laughs> it's bathroom content. But then the other side is the, is the educational, the long form. And I think podcasting is really hitting its stride where you are seeing... You know, podcasts where, where people you know, will watch for 30, 40, 50 minutes. They watch for an hour. And that certainly makes the platform happy because you've got people w- staying engaged for a long period of time. You're getting those minutes in. And if there are ad breaks or whatever it is, that makes the platforms happy. So Absolutely. maybe the, maybe the era of the of the 8 to 12 minute video is is going away. And it's it's either deep dives or ultra short content. And for some of us creators, it's the ultra short content that feeds over to the ultra long content. Absolutely. I, I can see this convergence of what these two platforms are. And the one that's going to get lost in the mix is Twitch. Um, I yeah. don't think there's a long-term future for the platform. They don't have a good video on demand service on the back end that, that competes anywhere near what a uh, YouTube can do. Mm-hmm. And the the diversity and the type of content just isn't there that like a YouTube has or what a Spotify is about to invest millions of dollars into. I, I mean, just this week we saw the Meghan Merkel podcast shoot the number one its first week. So if Spotify starts creating its own content like a Netflix, you know, Netflix original, these are essentially Spotify originals. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be too much longer before they truly are a major player in a space that they've never been a major player in, that is the video space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, when are we going to get Spotify original shows? I mean, we're, we're that's going to happen. It wouldn't surprise me, you know, just to just so just so Spotify doesn't go up, you know, doesn't lose to like you know, because there's Audible originals, right? You know, where there's right. audio dramas or, or things like that. I think that there's a, I think there's a space for for audio dramas in the same way there is for you know us you know interview style podcasts. I think that there is going back to you know quote unquote theater of the mind, um, and I'm biased because I'm I'm on a couple of <laughs> I'm on audio dramas, uh, but you know I, I think that I think there's a spot. I definitely think that there's a spot for it, and a time is going to come as soon as as soon as the creators have a way to monetize to offset the cost, and maybe it is something like Spotify original, if that comes to be a thing. 
because the audio dramas that I've that I've produced and I'm on, they it's re- they're really expensive to do well, and unless you're Q code, they're really hard to they're hard to monetize and be. Profitable I with. listened to one and I love it. Welcome to Night Vale. Yeah, yeah. And it's probably one of the more cheaper ones to do because it's mostly one narrator with some sound effects. But it's a wonderful audio drama podcast. And now with things like Apple releasing spatialized audio, uh, was it one or two iterations of iOS ago? And then the AirPod Pros all supporting spatial audio. You're seeing a resurgence in uh, uh, audio. Uh, uh, and then at Podcast Movement last week, Adobe, not Adobe, I'm sorry, Adobe was putting off Adobe Atmos, uh, kind of like how to mix your podcast for surround sound. Right. To support all these new spatial profiles. And then Android 13 came out last week, week before. And it now supports a spatialized audio, I believe. So like you're seeing some really cool stuff. And the key is to get it into the platforms that you already own. So your cell phone. And you're seeing all these platforms put out uh, new ways on the gear that you may already own. So it's not requiring the end user to buy anything which means adoption is going to be very quick in these kinds of spaces. It's the exact opposite of what we saw with VR, which was where you had a VR craze in 2015 in the video space, but VR audio really didn't take off because you didn't really hear the difference. You didn't hear the 360-ness. And at best, the visualization was a lot, you know, a phone that you held up that went like this, and you're like, ooh, I can see around the whole room because you didn't own the goggles. But with the new audio stuff that's been taken off this past year, you already own probably everything. I mean, the AirPods dominate, what, like 70% of the market share? And, you know, with a firmware update, boom, they all now have spatialized audio. So the things like your, you know, uh, audio books can now come alive in this 360 space. There's going to be a future for that kind of 3D, 360 audio audio book. And if you're the creator out there going, I learned a little bit about this, I can do this, I jump in, without a heavy investment, you could easily dominate some of these algorithms at the beginning of of this technology that's taking off right now like crazy. I I agree with you. I think that there's a a real opportunity, a real opportunity there. And it's great that that it doesn't, you know, that you... Maybe you don't need to buy like an Ambio microphone setup that costs, you know, $2,000. That if we can do it with either, you know, a, a couple of simple microphones or we can do it with DSP and a, and a simple stereo microphone to, to be able to do that. Or it just is plug-in based where, you know, you just use the um, uh, like Ambio, I'm not sure what it's called, uh, you know, plugins where you can move the sound around so it isn't Oh, like as super gears, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and I, I, I that's do, all that's, I think, going to come. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's going to come. It's going to come in the same way that you know so many of the cameras are doing fake bokeh. That is, you know, close enough that you know the the, the blurry background separation and you know the three D and the and the focusing after the fact. That's that's we're starting to see that come with we're starting to see that come with audio. There are microphones that can change patterns after the fact. We've got microphone models. We've got amplifier models. I think a lot of that is going to come after that's going to allow creators in our simple desktop uh, you know our simple desktop setups to make good immersive 3d probably metaverse compatible audio maybe that'll be part of the driver (laughs) you know but uh but to make it so that you can get that spatial effect maybe out of just a pair of you know pair of stereo earphones you don't have to have 5.1 headphones Uh, i'm excited i'm excited to see where it's going to go I, and, and on that same note, when it comes to things like the video side of just a normal stereo podcast going into the video space, I don't think you need to invest a lot right now. Because even like what you just said, uh, you, you do the, the bokeh effect in post. And right now, it's pretty darn close. If you don't try to like overdo the bokeh, where it starts to feather into the person, which you can get a pretty realistic version to upload onto YouTube to just add a simple camera. When you're recording your podcast with your friends in the same room, throw up one or two phones and you could cut this together pretty easily now. And then you're throwing it up on a secondary platform. You're always throwing it up like, let's say you're going to Lipson or Anchor. And that's, of course, being spread out to all the different major podcasts, you know, and and vocal stuff. And then you're taking that same thing, sync it all up to your video, throw it up on YouTube, 
throw it up onto some other site like a Vimeo and see if you can find a new audience. And it's so easy today to do that, that it's almost like if you don't, I got to find out why you're not taking that effort because your phone is more than good enough to share a really good audio podcast to a new sure. platform. Man, this has been enjoyable. Man, this has been a good conversation. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you came on to, to talk to me today. The future I, it, is, is very bright. Yeah, it really is. It's exciting. And yeah, it, it really is. And, you know, I, I'll say because you're here, but I'm really excited to see what, what Deity continues to do. I've been, a, I've been a real fan of what you guys have done. I, I recommend your microphones all the time. I'm a user of your microphones. And uh, thank you for sharing this one for me. But this, it, I'm, I'm really excited to see what you guys continue to bring forward for us. As, as creators, yeah, we think the, we think the future is is bright for content creators who care about their audience's ears. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I I agree. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. I'll have links to your YouTube channel. I'll have links to your microphones. I'll have links to probably an affiliate link, but I'll have a link to this microphone also. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being on with us today. Thank you, Mike. All right. Anytime.